And just want to take a look at finding the integral here of sine of x in absolute value from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 positive. Look at the graph of the sine function without the absolute value bars. You see that, for example, from negative pi over 2 up to 0, the sine function is less than 0, it's negative. And then from 0 to pi over 2, the sine function is greater than 0, positive. The absolute value of sine x you have to do, therefore, basically by doing it this way. You break it up into individual pieces. That's a way of doing it. Take a look. Because this portion where it says sine of x is less than 0 is negative, you can break up this right here and the absolute value bars as follows down below. You can write from negative pi over 2 to 0, and you can just place a negative sign in front of the sine function there. And that you have to do because over here in the picture, you see that sine of x is less than 0 in this range right here. So to, to take its absolute value, you put a negative out in front of the sine function for that reason. The other portion that says from 0 to pi over 2, to make that positive, you don't have to do anything that's already positive. So that looks as shown right here. So this negative sign is needed to make sure that from negative pi over 2 to 0, we take the positive version of sine of x. Once you've done that, at the next step, you need to differentiate. So the antiderivative of negative sine of x down below is cosine x. And you put in the limits, so negative pi over 2 and 0. You put in for sine of x the antiderivative negative cosine of x. You put in the upper and lower limits, so pi over 2 and 0. That's the antiderivative here, basically. and then you make sure that you have the limits in that position. You plug in the limits. So cosine of 0 minus cosine of negative pi over 2. Then here, where you have the negative cosine of x, make sure you enclose that within big parentheses. And you're going to have several different negatives. Don't confuse them. So you're going to write negative cosine of pi over 2. That first negative in this position where I'm pointing, that comes from right here, negative cosine of x. You plug in the pi over 2. Then you do subtraction. So you do minus. And again, be very careful now. You're going to have minus a negative, again, cosine of 0. So when you look at these two negatives right here, the second negative in the middle comes from negative cosine of x up here. The first negative comes from the fact that you have to subtract. When you do, for example, the evaluation of the limits. After that, you have the following. Cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of negative pi over 2 is 0, so you end up with 1 minus 0. Within the brackets, you have now negative cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Negative of 0 gives you negative 0. Here you have cosine of 0, which is now carefully 1. These two negatives right here turn into a positive, so you end up with a plus 1. Then you add up at the end. 1 plus 1 is 2. The zeros go away. They don't mean anything. They don't contribute anything. And you end up, therefore, with a positive value of 2 as the final answer. So this is all of the stuff. I'm going to just zoom out here. I'm going to make sure you can see it all from top to bottom. I'll see you in another video.